Uh, I'm going to start this interview with Pierre-Luc Dubois of the Winnipeg Jets by handing it over to Elliot. Uh, Pierre, I'm going to handle all the sophisticated hockey <laughs> questions, but Elliot wants to go into beard chat with you. So, Elliot, all yours. Well, Pierre-Luc, you were informing us in the pre-conversation we were having that there was a beard in the summer and there is a beard coming in the winter. Fill us in. <laughs> yeah, so I shaved. Um, first day of the summer, I shaved you know, to get some sun uh, on the face and everything. Um and then I think one month in, I just, I was like, ah, I want to see where my beard can go. I want to see how long it can get. I never, never let it go. So, um, I went three months without shaving. Um, you know, and my girlfriend's like, okay, I think it's time to, to pull the plug on this one. Um, we were going to see her family. So she's like, can you please, you know, clean it up a bit? So I let it go, but the compromise was I shave and then now it's coming back, but in a bigger way. So I said Christmas. At Christmas, I'll make a decision, but I, I want to last till Christmas. Then, you know, you always have pictures and stuff like that. So um, I think that's when I'll make, a, I'll make a decision after that. So for three months without shaving, like how long did it get? I mean, I always look at my beard and it feels, I look in the mirror and I'm like, you know, almost embarrassed by it. And then I'll see a picture <laughs> and it looks thick. So I, I to me, it got long. To me, it, I never, I've never had a beard that long. Um it looked better in pictures, I thought, than it looked in the mirror for myself. But I think that's always just like a, you know, a, a psychological issue yes. or something like that. Hang on, let me jump in on this one quickly. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of Elliot's beard when you would see it on television? So they asked me a question about that earlier, and um, it was impressive. I liked it. And then <laughs> they asked me turtleneck or beard. I said a mix of. I want to see a mix of both. <laughs> I do too, actually. Yeah. It, the the turtleneck kind of gave me Ron Burgundy, <laughs> I, which I love. So uh, I think maybe this year it's mustache and turtleneck. Maybe uh, you know I gotta tell you, Pierre Luke. So you've you've got a girlfriend, and I, I'm married. And and my wife said to me this off season, she said, "Look, two years ago was the beard. Last year was the hair. Can you be normal for a season? <laughs> yeah, one year. <laughs> for one year, can you just be normal? So this year, I think I just I just have to be normal. So as we get to the serious stuff, more serious, like I, I just gotta think like this is a reset for you. Last year was a lot of change in your life. This year's got to be a reset and a chance to kind of start all fresh yeah oh 100 percent um you know you're never ready for the year to end you never want the year to end um but when it ended you kind of look back at the mistakes you made the you know the the things you could have changed and one of the big things for me um you know every summer is a big summer for, my, for myself and last year uh you know i started off in montreal then it got complicated to find ice and to, to be able to work out so i went to columbus then there we had a COVID outbreak so it was kind of like you're in the gym two weeks, you're out of the gym for a week, you're in the gym for two weeks. I had three weeks. I, I was at home, and back then we didn't know if you could work out with COVID, so they told us don't work out. So I was at home for three weeks, just you know watching TV. Um, so I got to camp, not in the best shape that that, that I know I can get, and that, that and I was. And you're a in the past. fitness guy. Like people have told me, you're big. I love working out. Yeah, I love working out. I love all everything that comes with it. Um, so that's a big part of my game, and I think the way I play on the ice. Um, you know, as a physical game is, is not, you know, just hitting, it's protecting the puck, um, you know, being a center, being down low and, and winning those battles. So, uh, to not feel like your body is where it should be, um, you know, is never a good sign. And then you know, when I got traded, the quarantine, the injuries, it was just, I felt like I was, I was playing catch up a, a lot throughout the season. And, um, you know, now have to have 12 weeks in Montreal and to be ready for camp. Um, it feels really good. Did you ever feel comfortable last year? Like, it seemed like every every couple of weeks there was another pause for Pierre-Luc Dubois. There was another setback. There were like, at any point, did the season settle in for you? No, um, it, it, not really. Um, you know, it, 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 was, it was tough to, to get a rhythm going. Um, you know, I've never been injured in my life. I've never missed a game, even in mm -hmm. juniors. I missed maybe one game when I was 16 from like growing pains, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I, I haven't missed time being injured. You know, I had two injuries, um, you know, one kind of muscle related, the other, uh, you know, so it was something else. And then just from getting to a new team, practicing, we didn't have that many practices, um, you know, changing lines, changing positions. It, it, I found it tough to to find, you know, your your base and yep. then you work from there. It was, it was, it was kind of tough for that, but I think you learn from it and you know, it's only going to make me stronger and 
who knows, maybe one day I'll be 30 years old and the kid is going to come in and he's going to have the same problems I had, you know, last year. And mm-hmm. I'll be able to guide him through it because I've, I've, I've went through it. You know, I, I can always speak for myself. I, I, I have worked on my own mental game to be positive. Um, and generally I am, but I've had situations in my career where like I have a bad show or a bad thing that happens to me. And most of the time I'm pretty good at getting out of it. But if one is followed up with another and then another, you get into this place where you feel like you're on this treadmill of doom Mm -hmm. and you can't get out of it and it tears you apart. Like, did you kind of have that? Yeah, it's, it was, like I said earlier, um, you know, one thing every year that you know you're always gonna have bad games and you're always gonna have bad shifts and you're always gonna have you know a a little period where you're maybe not playing the best hockey you can play but the tough thing for me was last year was that you know I I knew my game wasn't where I wanted it to be but physically it was I wasn't where I wanted to be either where usually I can rely on that you know usually I can say look you know win your battles you know do do these things physically well and the rest will follow and um was one thing that was tough for me last year is I never I always felt like I was trying to catch up physically um you know my fourth or fifth game of the season um or sixth game of the season was like game 20 when everybody else is you know I felt like I was in preseason mode when the guys were in you know beginning of the season mode I felt like I was in the beginning of the season mode when the guys were in you know Christmas in middle and then I felt like every you know block of the season I was always a little bit behind so that was a you know I couldn't rely on that part but it's I'm somebody that expects a lot from myself I'm somebody that I don't know what I can do um and when I don't do it um you know I try to figure out why and and try to improve so it was it was a tough year but I mean it only makes you stronger at the end of the day and um the only way to become a a leader and and to you know one day hopefully win the Stanley Cup is to go through adversity what was the summer specifically like for you by way of what you worked on? What you, Other than getting healthy, getting comfortable again, getting into a good place mentally and physically, what did you work on this summer? Uh, I, I skated a lot more than I usually skate. Um, last year, I didn't skate that much because of because of everything with COVID. So I want, that's one thing where you know, my trainer and I wanted to, to, to change a bit. Same thing with the cardio. We changed it up. Um, try to, trying to get it, uh, you know, even better than it was before. But, I mean, I watched video this summer just to kind of get get my game back. I think if you, you know, if you, uh, like a show for you guys, you want, you almost want that, the next show to happen yes. so you can forget about it. Yes. Um, so I, I wanted the season, I want the season to start so I can kind of, you know, push the last one under the rug and four months without playing is, is a long time. So, you know, I was watching video from the years before, watching videos of other guys. Um, Who'd you, know, you watch? Uh, those guys are fun to watch. Those guys like Dreisaitl, Kopitar, Barkov. Um, so the power Aho. guys. Yeah, even guys like Aho, who's, yeah. you know, even guys like, I mean, I, I, for me, a big part of my game is puck protection. Um, and I think a lot of times we we put that in the category of a big guy with long arms, um, which I kind of fall in that category. <laughs> but then you look at guys like Panarin, who I played with for two years, who's 5'10", 175, I, I don't know, who's not that big, but he's probably the best puck protection guy I've, I've played with um, and against. You know, just the way that the technique and the skill that he brings to it, instead of just strength and, and you know, length, he brings a more, um, you know, thought process behind it, more hands, more skill, all that. Um, so I think if you can mix blend, mix a bit of both of those, then, you know, you're, you become unstoppable. But, um, yeah, I think Dreisaitl is a really fun guy to watch. He always has a trick up his sleeve. The passing, the creativity, um, I think it's something everybody can learn from. You're a big, strong center. Uh, I'm curious, from your point of view, whose stick is toughest to lift up out there? Hmm. Bergeron is Bergeron is a very strong guy. Um, Ryan O'Reilly, same thing. Even like Dreisaitl. Yeah. Those guys, uh, whether it's face-offs or in the corner, you know, you... you it's always like you fall for the trap of oh I think I got him you know oh, I, I he doesn't see me coming I'm and they probably don't even see you coming but they're just so strong and just they just play a heavy game that um, you know it's they have a heavy stick it's it's impressive and it's it's a skill that you know you don't really think of who 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 has a heavy stick you know yeah. who, who's strong on the puck well that stick was the legend right yeah yeah and I played against him once at the World Championships and. Uh, it was the same thing. I, I was so excited to play against them. And, uh, 
I mean, I don't know how old he was, but it was it was it was scary. It was set. scary. <laughs> it was almost scary. Like this guy, this guy, you know, I'm sneaking up on him, and I can't even take it away from him. So it's it's really, it was really impressive. Uh, any regrets last year, Jean uh, Pierre Luc? Like any? No, uh, I I don't like living with regrets. I yeah. think everything happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer in that. I think that you have to learn, you have to get out of your comfort zone. I think when you stay in your comfort zone, that's when you, you stagnate, that's when you don't really evolve. Yes. Um, there's a lot of new things that happened to me last year for the first time. And, you know, it was the first time that most of them were negative almost, you know, a lot of them were, were, were tough. A lot of them I didn't have an answer to right away, but you have to go through, I, I think you have to go through adversity at some point because one day you're going to have adversity and, you know, you don't want it to be at, for the first time in your life, adversity at 30 years old and to the you know, conference final, the Stanley Cup, you know, you want it to happen um, earlier on. You want to be able to, to go through it, to have answers. Every year there's new challenges. Every year there's ups and downs. But, you know, there's always going to be new new challenges. But um, to be able to, to go through all everything that happened last year, I don't see it as regret. I see it as, as learning. I see it as, you know, getting out of your comfort zone um, and new new challenges that – you know, I never thought could have could have come up. What was the hardest thing that you either read or heard about yourself last year that you said, "Hold on, hold, like, this is way off base." Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, it kind of, you know, it, for me, the hard part was, um, you know, when I got traded, it was the people were kind of putting words in my mouth of why he wants out. You know, this happened, this happened. Yeah. You know, it's because of this or. You know, he said this or all that. And in reality, I thought, you know, and with, with my agent, Pat, we thought that the best way to do it and it was the classiest way to do it is to is talk less. You know, it, it, when it came to, to the to the organization and myself, you know, we talked, but, and, you know, we gave, I gave my reasons and, and all that, but we didn't think anybody on the outside needed to know. Um, you know, it's a, it's a business at the end of the day and, but to to read articles about you know why the, why he wants out and why this and why that and he said apparently this happened and mm-hmm. you know he, he's you know insults of people that have never met me don't have no idea who I am yeah. have probably never even done an interview with me it's kind it was kind of tough to, to live with that um it was hard on my parents to be honest mm-hmm. you know for my mom to see stuff like that it was it was tough on her but like I said you you go through adversity and I guess that was just a part of it um you know now I feel like that was a a very hard part of my life and I went through it and I'm still alive so you know there's the worst things that could happen will will you ever say it publicly like say on a podcast interview yeah um (laughs) (laughs) pre-season podcast (laughs) will you ever will you ever say it publicly I don't know it's it's one of those things where it was tough for me last year because I, I there was, it came a point where there was article after article and yeah. an interview and of people speculating why and you know people can speculate it's fine but sometimes when you speculate a lot people start to believe that's the truth there came a point where you know I told Pat can I do it you know can I just go say it can I just go talk and that I think that was the immature side of me saying it I think that sometimes saying less is 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 better um and yeah maybe one day maybe when I retire maybe I write a book I don't know you know like maybe but I think I and I think and I thought you know the organization did so many good things for me you know they drafted me they believed in me um you know they drafted me third overall when nobody thought I'd go third overall they gave me a chance um so I don't know why I'd go out there and, you know, say necessarily bad things or say things that, you know, I might regret later on. I don't. I didn't think anybody there deserved that. The staff, the players, the fans. I I thought that maybe saying less would annoy people and make people mad. But down the line, I think that's the best way to be respectful. Um, first time I saw you play was when you're in Cape Breton. And you were playing with Sveshnikov and Lazarev, like what like, ridiculous line! Just <laughs> uh, so Evgeny Sveshnikov 
was picked up by your team, the Winnipeg Jets. How much of a hand did you have in that, if anything at all? Uh, not not really. I I so I saw a rumor on Twitter. That's how I found out. Yeah, I texted him right away. I said, "Please tell me this is true." <laughs> um, he's he's one of the guys I love to play with. Yeah. You know, when I played with him in Cape Breton. Um, but he's also just he was my big brother when I got there. He was um. You know, at my draft, he got presented at the same time as me. That's when I first met him. He was, he's such a hardworking guy. I, I looked up to him when I got to Cape Breton. Um, so when I found out that he could sign in, in Winnipeg, I texted him right away. I said, please tell me this is true. And if, <laughs> if you have a decision to make, please j- just do it, you know. Um, so I'm really happy he's there. I'm really happy we signed him. Um, I'm excited to see him. I, I think he's in Winnipeg. He just got there. Uh, mm, I'm good. really excited to see him. I think it's going to be good. I think, you know, to to have kind of that older brother figure that I that I once have back and playing with him, um, I think it it could help a lot. Watching those games in that line, and specifically you and Svechnikov, it looked like the game was too easy for you. Did it feel that way? Because that's what it looked like at times. At times, yeah, they playing with the two Russians kind of they kind of taught me how to play <laughs> in a way. You know, they kind of, you know, they would they would give me for like chipping a puck a simple play <laughs> you know they yell at me and they like they first like yell at each other in russian and i knew exactly <laughs> what they're talking about and then they tell me you know they give me shit for it and i think my first year in columbus torts was trying to find you know a guy to play with panera and he was mixing gift different guys and i was the only guy that didn't play with them and all all i was thinking was I can play with them. I know how to play. I played with Russians in Cape Breton. Cape Breton. Yeah. I know it's the NHL compared to the junior, but I know how to do it. And the first game I played with them, I played really well, and we won. It was in Buffalo, and then after that, I just kept going. And it was the same thing with Brett. You know, he'd give me for you know chipping a puck or dumping it. <laughs> and but I, I just I love the way they play. I love um, you know the the way they space out the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the passes they make, the things they try. Uh, you know, I, I just love. That, that spaced out game. So, so what did they want you to do? Like Lazarev and Svechnikov, what did so, they want you to do? So if like a, one like specific thing is they'd say, you know, don't cycle the puck and we don't want an F3 that's just like s- standing there in the slot. Yeah. Always movement. So instead of like cycling the puck, turn and the guy that's behind will come back and we'll switch, we'll switch off, we'll create confusion, we'll, we'll skate. Maybe you come up, the F3 comes behind you on the boards and we... And then we switched, you know, on an entry, cut to the middle, the guy cuts behind you. It felt like, um, I watched the, what's the movie? The Russian Five, I think. Yeah, Russian, yep. yeah. And, you know, you see, like, how the Russians played, like, Miracle and stuff like that. They're just <laughs> switching around. That's what it felt like. And, uh, I mean, I at first, I'm like, okay, we can, tr-. and then it started going better and better. And then I got, you know, more, it became more natural. Um, and then I got to the NHL with Panarin, and it was kind of the same thing. You know, for him, it was stay wide. If you're on your one timer side, stay wide. Don't don't come close to me. Hmm. You know, I'm I'm good one on one. Don't come close to me. Um, I can win my battles. I can ah. you know find space. I can beat my guy. Then somebody else will have to jump on me, and then that's when I find you. So, I mean, I I I I love playing like that. It's because that's such an instinct to go over and help out. Yeah, and that's what I try to tell you know the guys is don't come close because I I like those one on ones in the corners. And if a second guy comes, then that means somebody else is open out there. Um, you know, I, I find that when you're, when you're too close to each other, if you can't beat your guy, cause if you beat your guy, then the other guy is right in your face because uh-huh. your teammates right there. So it's kind of like putting a blanket on, on everybody. You know, you could put a, you could put a blanket on five guys if they're all close to each other, but if you spread out the zone, then mistakes can happen. Reads have to happen. Yeah. I think reads is when you make mistakes and you create space. So for those guys, that's, that's what the game was about. Can you play like that with anyone in Winnipeg? Uh, I mean, I played with pretty much everybody in Winnipeg. I played a lot of positions. Um, you, know, you look at Nick Ehlers and the talent that he has. Um, I think that I think we can find uh, we can find some chemistry there. Um, you know, they we play a different way than we played in Columbus, so that was a little adjustment period for me. Um, you know, in, in Columbus, my first year, the motto was "safe as death." Yeah. You know, so it was like sometimes you have. I mean, I have clips. Sometimes they're like the five guys are below the top circle, you know, and like <laughs> the two defensemen are in front of the net. You know, like that's got to be Jones and Moransky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's like sometimes like there's a goal. Like I remember it was in Carolina, 
Nudavara gets a pass back door and he's just a tap and, and everybody's looking around like why is the defenseman back door on like <laughs> and he was standing there for like se- seven seconds it wasn't just like he just came down and got the pass he was like st- standing back door by himself because that's where the open space was so um you know I, I that's how we played in Columbus for for a while um and then in Winnipeg it's a different style of game so it's a little adjusting but I think that this year with more practices and 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 uh, you know, having played there last year, yeah. I think we can we can build some chemistry. Last one for me. Who was the guy when you got to Winnipeg who you played against that you thought he was the biggest idiot alive, and then you met them and you're like, this guy's actually a really good guy. Oh, I mean, I played. We played Winnipeg twice, you know. So I they're a big team. I that I did not I did not like to play. Mm-hmm. Um, Neil Pionk actually, he's like. He's like a fire hydrant. You know, he's not tall, mm-hmm. but he's solid and he steps up on guys. And when he was in New York, he stood up on me one time. And I remember thinking, okay, like, I don't, you know, there's, sometimes you get out there and you're like, okay, I have to get my head up. Who's out here? You know, yeah. and you look around. I remember seeing him and I was like, ah, okay, it's fine. Like, I'm, <laughs> and he stood up on me and I didn't fall, but I lost, you know, my breath. And I remember thinking, oh, like, who is this guy? He you drove know? Marner crazy too. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. tough to play against, and he's he doesn't he doesn't talk like I'm like he doesn't smile on the ice. He's just like status quo, and he doesn't get emotional. And but he stands up on guys. He gets under the guy's skin. Um, so I, when I when I got there and I, I got to meet everybody, he's a nice guy. Um, you know, loves to talk, loves to joke around. So um, it was uh, pretty interesting getting to know him. That's awesome. And this has been really interesting. Thanks, Peter. To know you. Thanks yeah, so much for thank doing you. this. Great to see you in a great space mentally, physically yeah, as well. Uh, best of luck with the Jets this year. Thank you very much.